Hey, if you get a chance, check out my new webpage. Let me know what you think. All right, today I'm going to go over something a little bit different. Most of the times I deal with stuff dealing with tractors and, uh, uh, you know, maintenance of tractors or equipment that has something to do with tractors. But I thought I'd take time uh, to go ahead and do a, uh, a video on how to service a, a generator for the, for the winter. I'll go over uh, changing the oil and also draining the carburetor and just some minor uh, things you have to do uh, to keep it ready when you need it. I bought this uh, little generator last year while I was uh, camping in the Smoky Mountains. We went to a primitive campground and we did a, a generator and did a lot of uh, uh, looking and uh, read a lot of reviews and found that this little Predator, predator generator from Harbor Freight has just got outstanding reviews. And until this point, I have uh, been very, very pleased with it. I've had zero issues. It is absolutely as quiet as a Honda, uh, and you push the button and it starts every time. It has a uh, electric start on it, and I am just very, very impressed with a little generator. But, as I said before, we're going to go ahead and, and do the uh, service. This will be uh, the uh, first oil change in it, but uh, uh, also, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's drained uh, the fuel's drained out of it for the winter, and we'll go through all the processes. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and read our manual. And, and as hard as it is for a man to say that, I, I do think you need to do that on, on your equipment. Read your manuals, and uh, there's always stuff we overlook. Uh, I've been in maintenance my entire career. I retired as a maintenance officer in the Army, a warrant officer in the Army. And I've been to just about every kind of maintenance school that you can think of, but I still don't remember it all. So, again, I think it's uh, important to read the manual. The second thing we'll do now is go ahead and take the side panel off so we can gain access to the generator. Now, to uh, change the, uh, or fill, fill it up with oil, and to, uh, you know, check the oil, there's a little door here that can be opened up and you can uh, you can check it through that door but for servicing I like to have full access so I can see everything there you go it has two screws that that are retained in the holes and then it has these little uh, uh, knobs sticking off that goes through these rubber grommets that's the uh, to keep it from from popping out I really like how they've done this. It's a very, very quiet generator. All right, now I've got the side off. There is a couple of things we can do. This little hose here actually goes through the bottom, and you can uh, uh, just pull that out and let it hang over the side. I find that to be easier so that it drips down to my drip pan. Be aware of you know the you know open flames. Now this is something I do that's not in the manual, but it's just out of my experience of uh, working on generators. I've worked on a lot of generators, like four four hundred k generators, and down to the smallest little five k generators, three k generators. So, but one of the things I do on gas generators is I make sure there's a little bit of fuel left in in the uh, tank, just a very small amount. Uh, if there's not enough in there to drain out, I go ahead and put a little bit more in. And then I will go ahead and put Stabil, a pretty strong dosing of Stabil, in that fuel. And then let it run for a small time so it's shaken up. And then I'll go ahead and uh, uh, I will go ahead and drain the remainder out. And whatever's left in there, if there, there's no way to always get every little bit of fuel out uh, unless you take the carburetor apart. So what this will, any remaining fuel will have Stabil in it and that should last you for the next year. What will happen if you leave gasoline in here is basically if you take a little can of gasoline and just like a little coffee can of gasoline and put uh, put gasoline in there and then put a little plastic lid on it and then go set it up, go set that can off to the side and you wait a year and come back and look at it. The inside of that uh, gas that little can will be like a varnish on the inside and that's exactly what happens on the inside of your carburetor when we leave fuel in it over the winter you come back in the spring like you're going to do your camping or let's just say the power goes out and we need the generator you go out and push the button to start it and guess what nothing happens it just cranks and cranks and cranks or if it's a pull type starter it just pulls and pulls and pulls well 
you're not getting fuel. And the only thing you can do in these smaller carburetors like this, every now and then you get lucky and you can clean them out. But the most part, the, the, the holes are so tiny in this carburetor uh, that you basically just have to throw them away and order a new carburetor. They are so small that it's very hard to get them unclogged once they are clogged. So anyway, moving on. Now what I do is I put a little bit of gas in here, make sure there's just a little bit of gas left into your uh, main fuel tank. And I put that a little bit of Stabil in, in the fuel. And then I run the generator for a little while. So all the fuel that's left in here has a very high, high dose of Stabil in it. And what Stabil does, it keeps the fuel from turning to a varnish. It basically stabilizes it, hence the name Stabil. All right. And then I go ahead and drain the bowl here and the remaining fuel that's in this tank that'll come out into, into my pan. And uh, any remaining fuel left in the bowl of the carburetor will still have Stabil in it and you should be set for several, uh, several more uh, months without any issues. Now when we do this, we're gonna go ahead and turn the fuel on. on the, most generators have an on and off fuel switch. Turn your fuel on to the, to the on position and then there is a set screw on the bottom of the carburetor that turns this uh, turns the, allows the fuel to drain out of the of the bowl here. Now it's different on every one. One thing I also recommend doing is taking the uh, go ahead and take the cap off of your your gas tank so that air can flow freely. So we'll go ahead and see what happens. I'm trying to stay out of the way so you guys can see. Oh, well, there we go. I would say there's a, I'm not sure exactly how much fuel is in there, but uh, there's a, let's say a pint or so left in there. So we'll drain all of this out and I'll get back to you. All right, I'm back. All the fuel is drained out of it. Uh, what I'll do now is go ahead and put the uh, gas cap back on it. And I'll turn the fuel off on the on the front here. And this screw right here needs to be seated back down tight so that if there is any remaining fuel left, just little tiny bits, it doesn't drip out at some other time. Uh, you want to control that. So I'll tighten that back down. And then I'll go ahead and place this hose back where it originally went through down out, the out, of, out of the bottom here. Now, what we've done is... Uh, any remaining fuel that's left in here, which is very, very little bit of fuel, is has got a pretty high concentration of Stabil in it, and that will keep it from turning to varnish. And when I need this generator again, I will be able to add fuel and just crank it up. The next step I'm going to do is to change the oil in this generator. Now this generator has a very nice uh, feature where the drain plug is, is down here. Uh, and then it has a hole in the bottom where you can allow it to drain directly out into uh, out the bottom. And what I got, I'm sitting on a welding table, and this welding table has gaps in it. So I'm going to line it up perfectly where I can release the oil out the bottom, and uh, uh, it'll drop directly down into the drain pan without having a big mess. At least that's my hope. All right, we're going to drain the oil, but I went ahead and put uh, some uh, paper towels in here to, uh, you know, if anything spills. But go ahead and take your drain plug out and uh, just set that out of the way. And that'll keep it from having a, a, a vacuum and it'll let the oil drain out more freely. All right, this particular uh, drain plug is a 10 millimeter. So I got a long extension, which makes it easier to get in there. And I'll go ahead and pop it. And then I'll put my ratchet out of the way and just use it the rest of my hand. And uh, let's uh, see how big of a mess I make. Let's see if it works as good as it uh, is advertised. And sure enough, it's pouring right out the bottom. And I actually got the uh, uh, distance correct on the slit in the welding table. So it just pours directly through right down to the drain pan. Yay me. While the oil is draining, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the uh, filling this thing back up. According to the manual, we're going to fill up the uh, oil. We'll go ahead and put the dipstick in, but not screw it in. It's just going to, you're going to put it until it touches the threads. 
and then we want it to uh, the oil to come up through here until it uh, uh, reaches the the high point. I personally, you know, according to the manual, it's good as long as it's in in this area. But because the generator has so little of oil, it's just a very small amount of oil in these small generators. I want mine to have as much as it can. Now, and and these these things have to be changed every hundred hours. Uh, the oil says to, or the manual says to change the oil every hundred hours. So, uh, you know, that's not very long if you're out camping when you're running this thing maybe eight, you know, maybe ten hours a day, depending on, where, you know, how you're doing it. Uh, so you, you can really add some oil or some uh, uh, time up on this generator quick when you're doing it like that. Generator has the uh, uh, oil has drained out of it. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the, the uh, oil drain plug back in. And I always start this by, by hand. I've seen people put impacts on these little things. And also, you know, there's, you can really crank down on this thing and strip those threads out. Like, you know, a good firm tightening will do. You don't really need to put a, a ton of uh, pressure on those. Uh, it's a fine thread boat, so it's not gonna, it's not going to uh, vibrate loose. You just, you just want it to, uh, a good, good firm uh, tightening. Now you got this thing in the shop when you're doing this, this is the time to clean it up. If you've got uh, uh, any dirt or anything in here, dust, this oil will absolutely cause dust and dirt to attract. So make sure that you uh, go ahead and uh, clean the inside area if you spill anything. And that's also why I say when we're doing this, now that we're going to fill it up, I'm going to put the, uh, I'm going to put the, paper towels back up under my field tube so if I do spill some it, it stays clean. The cleaner an engine is, the cleaner a generator is, the longer it will last. Alright now I want to talk about a little bit about funnels. Now, I make all my videos as if uh, the person on the other end watching them never done any of this stuff and, and it's not to insult your intelligence but it's just if you've never been around it you may not think about it. Now, you've got this, I have this little funnel here, it's been in the shop, I'm going to put my oil through it. Now it's been setting out, uh, it's not dirty, but it's been setting out and it's got dust in it and it's very important to clean that out. That's why I keep uh, a brake cleaner around and I'll take brake cleaner and run through this and make sure that all the dust has been washed out of this funnel before I put oil in. These little small engines don't have oil filters and it's very important, it's probably the most important thing you can do is to put clean oil in them. And if there's tiny bits of grit, now you've seen some of the other videos I have here in the shop where I am uh, grinding and, and I'm uh, uh, welding and there's all kind of dust and grit in this shop. So make sure you clean the uh, uh, the funnel out before you put the oil in. Now my funnel's all nice and clean on the inside and we're ready to put oil in. I'm going to use Mobile One 10, uh, 10W30 Synthetic. That's uh, 10W30 is what it's recommended for, for this generator for the uh, environment that we use it in. Uh, it's a It's got a pretty wide range of temperature uh, variation that this oil will protect. And I'm a big fan of synthetic, especially in these small engines where you have so little oil. There's little things you can do to make your life easier. Uh, I always try to do stuff like this where I take a zip tie and uh, put it uh, through the uh, loop on the top. That way I can just pour my oil in and then just kind of keep an eye on it. I don't have to hold the funnel up. And it makes it just easier. All right, keep in mind... Uh, that the oil is uh, very cold and it moves slowly, uh, take your time doing this. Pour it in here. Now this little generator here uses 20 ounces of oil. And that's not much. 20 fluid ounces. If you think about it, that's about a 20 ounce uh, uh, soda. So there's not a lot of oil in here. So if you just go dump it in there real fast, uh, especially when it's warm and the oil moves quickly, you'll overfill it and it'll spill all over the place and then it'll be overfilled and you'll have to drain some out and then you'll probably make another mess. So, and, and these are all things that I've done. So, learn from my experience and uh, uh, just take your time. Okay, we've got our oil filled and it's filled to the proper level. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and then reinstall. I've cleaned my dipstick off and checked everything, make sure it's right. Make sure you go ahead and remember to put your dipstick in. It happens. People forget to put their dipsticks in. I've done it, I'm not going to lie. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is check the air filter. This was the uh, first service of this, of this unit, so I really don't expect it to, you know, to see any kind of uh, dirt, um, but we're gonna check it out anyway. All 
All right, that's a little bit difficult to get off. You have a little clamp there you have to remove uh, thanks to the EPA. So we'll go ahead and pull this filter. It's nothing more than a foam filter. This is already inside a case, so there's nothing, uh, really not that not high intensity of a dirt. You're not expecting this type of generator to be in a dirty environment like, say, you would a, a utility generator. This is made for more like camping and, and just around the house. So, but uh, there's the filter. It's just a piece of foam. Like the old lawnmower filters, uh, I wouldn't. It wouldn't hurt my feelings to see a, a, a pleated uh, paper filter there, but uh, this is fine. And just be aware of what you can clean it out with. Uh, I've seen people dip them in uh, gasoline, and then the next thing you know, this thing is uh, swell up about three times the size of of what it is now. So, blow it out with air, wash it out with soap and water, let it dry. In this case, I don't have to do anything because it is clean. All right, I got the air filter back on. The next thing I'm going to check is the uh, spark arrester. For for those who don't know, uh, in, in the national parks, you have to have a spark arrester on your generator. If you uh, don't have a spark arrester on it and the rangers come around and check, and they do check, uh, they will kindly ask you to turn the generator off uh, and or leave and or fine you. I have heard of one person being fined. So a little spark arrestor is just this little thing on the end. It keeps uh, any, any sparks from the exhaust to come out. It's very unlikely that you'll have any sparks anyway, but it's just a, an additional safety feature. Now this spark arrestor is held on with two small bolts, and uh, periodically you want to take this off and run some uh, carburetor cleaner through it. And that carburetor cleaner will break down the, the, the carbon and, and then dry it out and put it back on there, and you'll be good to go. I'm not going to mess with this one because it's only got such a, a, a few, it's only got a few hours of, of, of use. All right, for the people that do have this Predator generator, it is electric start. Uh, during the winter, what I would recommend you doing is go ahead and take the battery out and put it on a trickle charger so that over the winter, uh, you're, not, you're not wasting your battery or having your battery go down. At minimum, disconnect it, but I, I say trickle charge it because... A battery that stays charged will last longer. So here's your here's the battery, and uh, we'll go ahead and take it out of this pouch here, or this little area that it stores on the generator. Now it's kind of tight in here. Now these little batteries are expensive, so that's one right reason I say, you know, take the time and go ahead and maintain these things. Uh, like I said, a battery that stays charged will last much longer. All right, we found my screwdriver. It's amazing how tools disappear when you're uh, working. Always disconnect your, your negative terminal first. And the reason being, if you're, if you're touching the negative, this negative wire goes directly to the frame. All right? So if you touch this wire, and I'll go ahead and do it and touch it to the frame, you can't, you can't short it out. However, if you touch this, this positive wire and the frame at the same time, it'll arc out and burn your screwdriver up, possibly burn you, catch something on fire, all the gamut of things that could go wrong. So always disconnect your, your negative cable first, and this scenario works on all batteries, uh, including uh, parallel and series batteries. Uh, disconnect your negative first, and uh, put all your hardware back on your battery so you're not you know, looking for it next year when you put it together. And there you go. Now, that is that negative cable is in, out of the way. There is no circuit. So if I touch this positive to any one of the uh, pieces of metal in here, it won't do anything. So it's just a good rule of thumb. Always disconnect your negative battery first. Battery cable. Everything is cold and much more difficult because the plastic's colder. Now again, I'm putting my putting my hardware back in, so next year when I go to go camping, going on a big camping trip in May, uh, this will all be ready. Now, this generator has the ability to start with uh, with just a pull start, but that is a very nice feature to be able to uh, uh, start this thing with just putting a button. The older I get, the more I appreciate that. There again, I'm going to go ahead and button this thing up. 
Put the uh, so I don't lose my hardware. And now the next thing I'll do is I'll take my little battery. And like I said, these little batteries are like seventy or eighty dollars. So uh, if you go to the you know the auto store to pick something up like this, so by all means make them last as long as you can. This will go over on my bench and go on the trigger charge. And and the next time I worry about it is uh, a uh, next year. Now one thing to to point out is make sure that it is a, a you know a float charge that it kicks off because you can't overcharge these small batteries on a trickle charge. So I need to clarify that you know make sure it's it's a float that it it just keeps the battery uh, topped off and then when the battery drops below a certain level the charger kicks back on and when it gets to a certain level the charger kicks back off. That's very important. And most of the chargers nowadays have that built in. That used to be a, an optional feature, but most anything new has it already. All right, I want to talk about uh, the spark plug on this thing. The uh, the, the manual says uh, check the spark plug and clean it every 50 hours. Uh, I've not had any issues in any of the generators uh, where I really need to pull the spark plug every 50 hours. Basically, every 100 hours when I uh, do the oil change, I go ahead and pull the uh, plug and and generally I just change it because at a hundred hours that's generally my one you know each year of camping I, I put about a hundred hours on the generator each year uh, the last generator I had I did the same thing but uh, the spark plugs right here on this it's nothing it's not really hard you pull this little plug out of the center there's a rubber boot pull the rubber boot out then you can get your spark plug wrench in there and pull the spark plug out so I would say every hundred hours go ahead you know once a year just buy a spark plug. They're two or three dollars and you don't have to worry about it. Hey, I'd like to take time to thank you all for watching my videos. I, I really enjoy doing these videos. I have a great time doing it and uh, I, I like to pass on the knowledge that I have and also learn from everybody uh, out there in the world. There's so many uh, things I've learned off of comments from YouTube. Uh, things that I've learned and things I forgot. Uh, but anyway, I'd like to really thank you for watching and uh, please give me a thumbs up and uh, Subscribe. Have a happy new year.